Like God, use me as your mouthpiece. I'm a willing vessel. Well, the Antichrist is a willing vessel. Now he's dead. Ooh, vacancy. AC moved out of his apartment and someone took a presidency. Dragon moved in, basically, and becomes the beast. So the beast is Satan, but it's not point blank Satan. It's Satan wearing a mask, an Antichrist mask. Because, you know, hey, like, hey, why would I lose this? This is a good opportunity because who rose from the dead? Christ. Well, if I step into this shell right here that's not being used no more, what's that look like? I can be the Christ. See? If you worship me, that makes me the Christ. What a warped way of thinking the devil has. I mean, seriously. Absolutely. And everything the devil does is mimicking God. Everything he does. Up to this point. So why not resurrect himself now, the rest of us, now we know that's not what's happening, but to the world. Yet remember, when you don't have discernment, you can't see this. I saw the beginning of a movie called The Budapest Grand Hotel, I think is what it was called. I haven't seen the movie. I was sitting on the couch. One movie went off, and it came on. And all I heard was what was being said. I heard Revelation being quoted. Now, some of course Revelation, my ears perk up real quick. Uh-huh. What's that? And there it is. And you have a cardinal, the dude with the red thing on his head. I think it's a cardinal. Um, he's talking to the dude in white. Has to be the Pope in my head. And he is showing a slideshow. The Twin Towers falling. And he applies it to a, one of the catastrophes in Revelation. The, the horsemen or the, one of the judgments, you know. A star fell from the sky. And there's the picture of the Apollo mission that failed and the thing crashed. And it's like, it took the most mundane events um, the Black War, they showed ISIS running all over the place. It's like, really? And I get irritated for just a few seconds, and mine goes, they don't understand. Why? Because they don't have discernment. This, I can't fully comprehend it, because I don't lack discernment altogether. I don't know what it's like to read the Bible and see it as if I was reading Shakespeare's sonnets. I don't know what that's like. I have no point in my life. I mean, I grew up in a church. A very borderline, Pente- uh, not Pentecostal, um, charismatic, non-denominational church. People in my church were not afraid to get up there, speak tongues, dance, make a fool out of themselves. To me, that's every, that's every Sunday, you know, what I grew up with, okay? So, I mean, the whole Baptist thing where everything's all in order and approximately time frames, and it's like... We'd have worship. I would have a Sunday of worship. They never got to the preaching sometimes, you know. So I mean, I don't get it. To, to me, I can't see it that way. And honestly, I'm very grateful for it. I would hate to live a life where I had no discernment, and when I read the Word of God, I did not hear the Word of God. I heard a story or a book, as if I had read Little House on the Prairie or End of Green Gables or something like that. Good books, by the way. Not the first one, the second one. I don't think about Little House on the Prairie. I'm a guy. Can't have it. Anyway. So, the Antichrist is wounded unto death. He's going to come back. The wound, because the wound was healed. And the whole world will marvel after the beast. So you have the Antichrist, who is now indwelt by Satan himself. Satan has full control. Apparently he can do that. God's going to let him. Because God has to let him. Not because God doesn't actually have a say-so in the matter. But because his word said it will happen, therefore, God's word will come to fruition. So by God's word, even Satan's authority is given. All the destruction and chaos he's going to he's going to pull off is only because God's word said he would, or said he could. I guess it's that God's the Bible is also Satan's permission slip, because God will not violate his own word. He would lose all credibility, and God being perfect, that's not going to happen. And they worship the beast. or they, And they worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Note, they didn't just worship the Antichrist. They worshiped Satan. It's two parts. Now, how aware are they that they're worshiping both? I don't know. Because the dragon is now essentially incarnate in the beast... 
So really, it's really doing one is like, it's pretty much doing both, you know. If you worship my car, and then I get in my car, now you're worshiping me and my car. Do you know that? I don't know. You kind of are, though. My car is awesome. That's interesting. I don't actually have one. Anyway. So. Exactly. Which, I'll talk about the Trinity later. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Huh, there we go again. How long is forty and two months? Three and a half years or one thousand. Yes. Everything at this point, this point has an anchor of three and a half years. Every time in all, all four of these chapters so far, these last four chapters, you have a three and a half year margin. God, when God told John, should I want to write, he wanted to make it clear in no uncertain terms, hey, there's three and a half years left. That's it. Get with it. Of course, one of the next coming up scriptures kind of sucks for everybody else, but we'll get to that. So we know, at this point, the beast has authority for the next three and a half years, and that's all he has left. So, Six, and he opened in his mouth and blessed me against God to blaspheme his name and the tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. It's not, not heaven, those that dwell in heaven. He will blaspheme, talk smack, crap and everything about everybody having to do with God. Why? Well, I have a theory. Again, North got shut off. He can't gripe at North no more. So he's going to go down here, jump in his AC shell, and all of a sudden he's going to gripe to everybody. The whole world's going to hear it. He can't gripe to God no more. He has nothing better to do with his time. Plus, I mean, literally, you cannot kill a Jew every 60 seconds. You can't kill a Christian every 60 seconds. He's got to have something to do with his time. Some of it's going to have to wait a little bit, so he's going to have to gripe, complain, try to make himself look good and take every soul he can from God. That's the only thing he really cares about. Ah, I hate when I do that. Not too far. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given over him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. From Adam's creation. To this moment in time, if your name has not been written in the book of life, which means if you have not given your life to God, you will worship the beast. I have been only able to take this one way. If you are not saved by the middle mid-tribulation events, you cannot be saved. cannot say that for 100% certainty. But what I just read, if their name was not written in the book of life, or all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name is not written in the book of life. I, I don't see any room for interpretation there. I don't see any symbology there. Or symbology. Symbolism, sorry. Symbology is not a word for the record. I really, it's from a movie this guy goes, what's the symbology? It's like, and ever since I saw that stupid movie like 10 years ago, that word that's a jump into my head, I'm like, it's not a word. Of course, the guy says it, the movie corrects him. He goes, symbolism is the word you're looking for. It's like, yeah. I still say it. But, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't. This is not a symbolic reference. This is a statement. This is how it's going to be. Authority was given to him. If you're naming the book, you will worship him. If any man hath an ear to hear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills by the sword will die by the sword. It's it's a statement. It's saying you have time to make a choice. If you want to be a captive, be a captive. If you want to be free, be free. You have a choice. Not choosing is a choice you make. You cannot stay and sit on the fence. You cannot be neutral. You are either for God or against God. And Revelation chapter 4, 
or I'm sorry, chapter 3, the church of Laodicea, he says, because you are neither hot nor cold, you are lukewarm, I will spew you from my mouth. It's either be on fire for God or go to hell. It's either be on fire for God or be on fire. That's, really, that's your only two options, you know? And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. He spake as a dragon. So, when we have as, or like unto, it's mirroring. Everything Satan does is as Christ did. It isn't what Christ did, because he can't achieve what Christ achieved. It's like it. It's as it. This beast speaks as the dragon, and he exercises all power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He is doing literally what Satan is doing. Christ comes and is perfect. He performs signs and wonders. The Antichrist is going to come, try to be perfect, fail miserably, but in his mind, he's going he's to do it perfect. He's going to be bad perfectly. So that's about as close as he can get. And then he's going to bring up a little fart knocker who's going to come up and try to be him. It's literally the blind leading the blind. <coughs> 13, and he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had a wound by the sword and did live. Now, that scripture I like because that tells us how the Antichrist is going to die. Does that mean the Antichrist is going to get killed by a gun with the sword's name? Probably not. It says he was wounded by a sword. I mean... Someone's going to get close to the stab the Antichrist in the head. How? Forehead, back of the head, top of the head, who knows? It doesn't matter. It says to be pierced by a sword, his head. You know, it's someone in the inner circle, I think, or who's really, really good at the whole incognito thing and walks amongst shadows and all that stuff. Someone's going to be a really, really smooth operator, you know? Might just be an assassin. You know, it might be a Christian. Who knows? You know, it could be anybody. But this, we call him, well, those who study eschatology refer to him as the false prophet. Why? What does it sound like to you guys? <clears throat> who wrote most of the, Old, the New Testament? You want to see a comparison there? This little, this little wannabe antichrist is, is, his, is Satan's Paul. That's all he is, running around saying, Paul's like, worship God. This is what God did. This is what you should do. God died for you, yada, yada, yada. Little, little false part running around. Hey, guys. Little, I have a little squeaky voice now. Hey, come over here. You know, hey, 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 I mean, God only knows how it's really going to happen. But I mean, in my head, it's like, that's what he's going to do. Because I'm going to have a little mouse running around squeaking all over the place, trying to get him to worship him willingly as they can. I mean, there's going to be some goats. And there's going to be some sheep during the white judgment throne. There's going to be people who were undecided. Again, to be lukewarm is to burn, one way or the other. There will be some that survive, though. <clears throat> and obviously, they did not choose to serve. Because all that served were the chaff that were bundled up and thrown in first. They were, when Christ comes down, ascends from heaven for his second coming, at that point, he'll make war with the beast. And he'll destroy them. We know that. I mean, anybody's ever read Revelation once. I mean, if you remember nothing else, or if you've been a Christian and you remember nothing, you know nothing else, you know Christ comes back, we win. He doesn't come back to lose. So, I'm not spoiling nothing in Revelation for you guys. He's going to come back. He's going to win. Well, he has to fight somebody. And we'll get more into that later, but obviously some will not choose to submit. They will remain neutral. And that's who that's referring to. Mm. Lost the part. Okay. Say to them, they should make an image of the beast. Okay. 
15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the 